coach. Kev, is it any surprise? No. <laughs> no, it isn't. It is the man himself, Kev. It's the only, it's, it's only Mr. Paul it's Mr. Wellens. Yeah, it's Mr. St. Helens, Paul Wellens. Now, Kev, I have to say, the fact that there's been no one else even considered in the frame, Rushy's not been able to blag a holiday to Australia on the provision that he comes back with a world-class coach like Justin Holbrook or Christian Wolf tells me that this man is the right man for the job at this moment in time. Yeah, I think, listen, every coaching appointment, you've you've got to have a cautious optimism about it, haven't you? And that goes for anybody you put in charge. But this lad's done his apprenticeship. He's, he's worked behind the scenes with Saints and with England since 2015 when he retired. Uh, I think he started as player performance coach at Saints, shadowing the first team coaches and doing work with the academy lads. And it's time that, that he got his chance. Um, as I say, every coaching uh, appointment is cautious optimism, but he's getting all the tools that he needs to be a success at the club. Is it unfair, Kev, that obviously we've got some fans who have suggested, obviously, after we had Kieran Cunningham, that they didn't want to see another club legend in charge. For me, you have to take everybody on, on their individual merits. That That's like saying, if you'd have um, an Australian coach who fails, never appoint another Australian coach. Yeah, it's a slightly different scenario to, to Kieran as well. Um, I mean, he's also a different man. Isn't he? he? He seemingly, as I say, he's done his apprenticeship. He seems to have done longer in the the, the back room um, than, than Kieran did. I'm happy to be corrected on that if it's if it's not right. But he's coming into a club where everything's in place for him. He's, he's probably got a better squad than Kieran in, inherited as well. Um, and it is unfair to to kind of compare them both, especially when when. Paul's not taken a first team game yet. Um so yeah, let's see how it plays out. You, you, I don't know, as you say, you, you can't turn around and say, oh, I don't want that type of coach again, because then who do you end up with? You can't rule you can't rule out one type of coach over another. You've got to go with who you think is the right man for the job. And obviously the Saints board see it as uh, as Paul. Yeah. Um obviously. One club man um, throughout his entire career um, since hanging up his boots in 2015. He scored 1,005 points for the club. He won two World Club Challenges, five Super League titles, five Challenge Cups, 495 appearances. It's not quite James Roby. <laughs> but it's not a bad set of medals to have, is it, as a player either? Yeah, you'd like to. I'd like to be one behind him. Um, you'd be doing all right, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's it. Listen, he's he's had such an illustrious career on the playing side of things, and he's he's very highly thought of. I, I remember chatting to a couple of mates years ago, and Wello was highly thought of as a coach then. Um, obviously, people say, "Oh, could have had another couple of years as uh, as a uh, assistant coach," but. There's a risk every time you change that he's going to turn around and say, well, I've done my time now. There's going to be an opportunity comes up. I'm going to take it somewhere else. Listen, he, he's it's his time, isn't it? Yeah, you get, you get the impression that he probably was at the point where he's, he's going to be getting itchy feet. How much more of an apprenticeship do you want the man to have? Um, as a player, he's worked under, I think he played under Ellery, didn't he? Just about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ian Millwood, Daniel Anderson. Um, he's coached alongside Sean Wayne, Justin Holbrook, Christian Wolf. How many more coaches do you, do you want to work under before you you, you want to be your own man? Now, I, I believe there was rival clubs sniffing round, um, but he's maintained his loyalty to Saints. He's obviously, it's always been in his plan that he, he eventually wants to be Saints coach. And as you say, it's Mr. St. Helens and we, and we should be bowing down going, we're not worthy, we're not worthy. 
Well, you can also add, I'm sure he, he was an assistant to Wayne Bennett as well. Wayne who's Bennett, yeah. Seen, yeah. Who's like seen as one of the one of the big coaches in World Rugby League or it's yeah, it, it that's it. Listen, I'm repeating myself by saying it's his time. You've got to give people a go. And, and you see how it works. Listen, not every coaching appointment does work. Some work better than others. It's it's going to be key to kind of who he has around him as well. Um, and listen, I think he deserves his chance. I think it's his time. As you say, if there's other clubs sniffing around him, and if, I think if, if Wolfie had done another year, he may well have stayed for one more and then been looking to take over after that. But as you say, if we get another coaching on a two or three year deal, is he then going to kind of look somewhere else and make a... I mean, God forbid he, he went to somewhere like Warrington and made a made a decent fist of coaching then. Um, yeah, exactly. But he, he goes and wins the first ever grand final as their coach, and we'd be thinking we should have we should have done that. As I say, and I will keep saying that every uh, coaching appointment is a risk, but this for me is a calculated risk. Someone who's highly regarded in the world of coaching. Otherwise, he wouldn't be an England assistant coach to Sean Wayne and, and uh, Wayne Bennett and the likes. And the so, fact I, that... I, missed, I missed out the illustrious Sean Wayne as well. Um, so he's even seen the dark side as well, Kev. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's just the fact that all the experience he's got, listen, it's time for him to kind of put that down and, and make his own his own way and... Christian Wolf said he's he's great to work with because he's got loads of ideas. Some that Wolf went with, some that he didn't. But it was always good. He was always good as a sounding board. So hopefully, um, Wello putting his um, his own ideas onto that pitch. Hey, let's rock it us to another grand final. Yeah, you, you can guarantee he's, he's been looking at the job for a long time and thinking it will be mine. Oh yes, one day it will be mine. Um, yeah. speaking of Mister Wolf. He's obviously had Mr. Wellens in mind. Well, he has. He, he said he said himself that he, he was great to work with. Um, they obviously formed a good team because well, you don't form a good a bad team if you go on winning uh, grand final after grand final after grand final, do you? And and the thing is, Kev, as you say, Mr. St. Helens, if we strike gold, and and he continues. The, the form and, and and the way the club goes and it works successfully for him, we've potentially got a coach for the next 10 or 15 years now. Yeah, for, as you say, if it works, it's, it's you coach for however long you, you want him there and however he lo- wants to be there. He may well turn around in the future and say, well, I'm going to go and try my hand in the in the NRL and go and coach over there. All right, John and- Lewis. <laughs> but he may it may just be be something in the future that is his I don't know his ambition. His ambition might be just to coach at Saints for the next couple of years and, and then move move on into something else. I don't know that. He may well want NRL. Listen, we know he's going to be giving it his all, don't we? Absolutely. Um I think the only bit of caution that I want to add is we've had four massively successful years. You hope next season we're going to do five in a row. At some point in the next couple of years, the cyclical nature of sport means we'll have competition. We may not... That sounds bad. We're saying we may not win it year in, year out. There's going to be dips. We may dip when James Roby retires and we have to find a new way of playing. I think it's important as, as a fan base, we give Paul the time to... to, to put his own stamp on things and get it right. You only have to look at the early days of Christian Wolf and then Wolf out, which we which we joked about for the last three years, just to see how quickly some fans can turn. Let's be sensible. Let's give the man time. He has done a great apprenticeship, but in the in the top role, it'll take time as well. Yeah, that's it. I don't I don't envisage him changing too much, but you're right. You, you have a look at. Our mentions, and I, th- I think we've tweeted some out, um, or tweeted at least. You can read the threads on our on, on our Twitter, where people were calling for a wolf out after about half a dozen games, uh, after what was a poor performance at Cass. But it was we were steadfast then saying you've got to give him time. Like we'll be we'll be the same with with Wello. 
you've got to give him time. You can't just well, people will because it's the the kind of thing of social media that it's instant gratification. I want my team to be the best and win fifty nil every week. It doesn't happen like that, and he's got to find his his feet. And Wolf did it, and then won three grand finals in a row. Now that said, Kev, a little bit of a, a left field announcement that. Mr. Welland's assistant is going to be Lauren Fresenu. Look at that sultry look, eh? I'll tell you what, he's going to be heartbreaking in this town. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren the dreamboat, though. <laughs> Honest to God, be the housewife's favourite. <laughs> you can tell you what, if you want to sell season tickets, put that man on a billboard. <laughs> but Kev I think it's a, a, a really astute um, appointment obviously he's he knows what it's like to be a head coach he obviously he was appointed um, when he got appointed at Catalans he was the youngest head coach in Super League at that time he had four and a half years there um, and, he, and let's be honest he, 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 he turned Catalan into, into a, a good side didn't he obviously he's played Super League himself he'll have played against uh, Paul many times during his career, and of course he, he's now the French head coach as well. Yeah, so the second time that we're appointing a national team head coach into our coaching staff after Wolfie. Um, I think you're right. I think um, as you say, he's he was a halfback, wasn't he? So hopefully he can uh, can bring a little bit of little bit of Gallic flair into the uh, into the team. Um, Potentially opens up to a couple of uh, a French players, which we've we've had a couple on, on our books over over time. So hopefully it opens that up as well. And as you say, just provides a little bit of experience alongside Wello. Um, it's someone who he was uh, appointed Ottawa Aces head coach as well. Uh, I don't think anything actually came of them, but people were appointing him as a head coach. And as you say, it was it was seen as an exciting appointment when he. He was the first French coach, I think, in was he in Super League? Um, possibly. I yeah, actually I know he's winning. I think he took over from Trent Robinson, didn't he? And he and he still yeah. and, and again, he still links in with Trent Robinson as well. Um, Trent is obviously going to be the director of rugby for the French during the World Cup, so he's he's got them links still with the NRL. Um, he took over the French national side and was asked by the French Federation to put a pathway in place. Um, he's been working with their under 17s, their under 19s, developing a B side that has been able to take on England Knights. Um, I think they're, they're, their under 17s actually beat um, their English counterparts by about 50 points. So if, if he's got a, a little bit of a links and, a, and an in depth understanding of the French game, you, you never know. We might get one or two young French players coming over um, to bolster yeah. the squad at some point. Yeah, definitely. And listen, that's that's got to be good for all rugby league, hasn't it? If that if that does happen to be the case, we've had um, we've had a couple of French players, as we say, we've had the French captain who won't be in the World Cup Theo Farge uh, at the club. Um, yeah, listen, as you say, I think it's a good steady appointment. Someone who'll be able to give his own views on um, on the game. Someone who's been there and, and done it as a head coach. Um, and as you say, it is slightly left field, but. Um, but yeah, hopefully it's a, a good, good appointment for us. Personally, I think he just sent his CV in with that picture and brush he couldn't resist. <laughs> what a man. What a man. <laughs> there he is, obviously, in his playing days with Catalan. And then, obviously, in charge of the French. So, Kev, are we a happy man? We. Oui. Oh, I like it. <laughs> um, yeah, listen. It's yeah, it's I think it's the right appointment at the minute. Um, I think that having a first time head coach with um, a, a, I'm not going to call him a vastly experienced head coach, but another head coach alongside him, um, who well, I'd imagine will have had a say. I don't think Christian Wolf had a say on who his backroom team was because Paul Wellens uh, was already an incumbent in, in the role. Um, 
but someone that he feels he can work with and someone who, who kind of has the same vision as him will question because you, you always want your assistant coach to question what's going on, not in a in a way that you're going to be at loggerheads, but you, you're going to turn around and, and kind of question, well, is that the right decision? And have a think about it and be able to be able to bounce ideas off each other. So having someone who's who's been there and coached in Super League, listen, I think I do think it's um, I do think it's a good, good announcement. Absolutely. And hopefully that combination will be able to carry the party on. Uh, it makes you wonder, Kev, how we actually went about recruiting um, an assistant coach this time round. As you say, it is a bit of a left field appointment. Wello may have well had a well had a say in who we chose. We know um, that was a breaking news announcement. That. Um, <laughs> We know that Richard Marshall was seen at the club recently. Sean Long was obviously available on the market. Um, it makes me wonder whether we did go out to advert maybe and interview candidates about what they'd bring to the club and, and maybe Lauren was the man they decided to plump on. Yeah, whether it's going out to adverts, as you say, or just going about the people who... Been... Yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> the Thursday in the Echo. Um or whether it's it's just people they knew were available. Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday, of... Wednesday, Wednesday in the Echo is the best day. Oh, oh is it Wednesday? Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's been a while since I've had to look. Um, I'll send you the... Yeah, it... Peace. Thanks. Um, yeah, it's it's whether they, they've kind of known what they're looking for and had a look at who's available, as you say, and, and turn around and have a look and think, well, we'll interview the likes of Lauren Fraser New and have a little look at it. There'd been others interviewed as well at the same time, you'd imagine, unless they see Wellows turn around and said, yeah, that's who I want. Absolutely. Um, Kev, before we go, um, quarter uh, another quarter of a million views added on. We've got three quarters of a million views for Red V TV. Half a million in the first four years and another quarter of a million in the last 15, 16 months. Unreal. Some go with that, isn't it? Yeah. What well, what I'd really like to do, Kev, I'd love to do Red V TV for a living. Well, so it might that. happen. Yeah. <laughs> and monkeys might fly out of my bus. <laughs> it, it won't happen. <laughs> it won't. Right, happen. Kev. I think we're nearly done. Yeah. Thanks to everybody who's watched and Comments on our videos and gives us. Wow! <laughs> I wish I had that. Her. I wish I had that. Her. <laughs> but yeah, listen. It, it is. It's a big thank you to everybody who's, who watches and listens to us um, chat about Saints and comments either on YouTube because we get quite a few people who comment. Um, we've got Martin, the Leeds fan, who's who's always in there giving these for you. Um, and we get people on Twitter and Facebook and that. And people wanted to to kind of grab us after a game. So hopefully we'll see some some different faces in the new year as well. I've got too much time on my hands, Kev. You certainly have got too much time on your hands. I want that hat, though. Well, OK. How good is the hat? So could you not turn the... Balls into rugby balls if you do get that hat made. Well, that wouldn't spell Wellow's World, would it? It'd be Wellie's yeah, World. It, would. it doesn't matter. Get him, in, get, get him into get him into rugby balls. It'd be fine. It'd look good. Trust me. I'll give it a go. Kev, how many Wayne's World references did you miss in the last 20 minutes? What, from you? Yeah. Oh, no. I've got them all. Just like your puns, I ignore them. Which ones did you get? <laughs> All of them. Don't you worry about that. You didn't even see that picture in advance either, did you? No. Anyway, right. Time to go. Kevin, party on. <sighs> party on, Kev. I'm not doing it. You're rubbish. Rubbish. <laughs> You disappoint me. Right. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And we'll be back with a very, very special episode of Red VTV soon. <laughs> <laughs>